okay, Sunday from 12 to 5, come to our house. We're going to be selling hats and bikinis, and we're going to have, like, a tea party. And then people from, you know, all over uh -huh. would, would come. And that's how, yeah, how I, I started to sell to people I didn't know, to random people. Hi, everyone. I'm Hello. Welcome. Let's do it again. Tropical Arts Club. Club. We are back for season one of the Tropical Arts Club. If you enjoyed our pilot episode, you are going to la 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 love this season. La 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 love. Exactly. I am so pumped to have this first guest on our show today. Her name is Nadia Diane. She is a Buenos Aires born swimwear designer who's in the house with us today. And she is the owner and designer of artisanal swimwear brand called Carmelo Pardus. It's really amazing. I've checked it out on the mm -hmm. website. I love it so much. And Janice and Nadia have been friends for a while and we have briefly met and I have to tell you, she is so cool. You're going to love this episode. Now, Nadia's brand, Carmelo Pardis, has generated over six figures of revenue as a one-woman swimwear company. That means she designs it, hand-makes it, and sells it herself online. And catch this, with no marketing, no SEO, no paid advertising and other corporate things, she has made a one-woman brand a huge success. And she's also been featured in many fashion shows in Miami and in New York. So this girl, you better listen up because she's going to tell you what's up. Exactly. And we'll stop droning on now. Let's take a peek behind the plants. Let's put our hands together for... Nadia, Nadia Diane! Diane! Yeah! Hi, guys. Hello, Nadia. Hello. How are you this I'm evening? Very well, thank you very much for mm -hmm. having me here. Thanks for coming. So, Nadia, to begin this interview, we will begin on a light-hearted note. Hmm. Nadia, yes. if your life and your journey in the arts were to be one song, what song would it be? Um, it will be, We Will Be Heroes from David Bowie. We Will Be Heroes from yes. David Bowie. Let's yeah. just take a minute to feel the song. Right. We, we, we might get a copyright strike if we put it here, so... Hmm. We can sing it. Can we sing it? I think we can sing it. I, I don't know the words, but... Oh. Hmm. I don't know the words. We, we might put some stock music here, yes. to. Okay. But you can sing it. Yeah, like you... Acapella. You I will accompany you. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. That That's not the song. We will be heroes oh. just for one day. And yeah. it's gonna be alright <laughs> just for one day. We are clearly not musicians, so no, let's jump not. into questions about the arts that we know about. Yes. All right. So let's just get into mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I'm curious of all the things in design in this world. Mm -hmm. Why did you start with swimwear? Um, okay, so when I started learning how to sew. Um, which was with a now a very close friend of mine. Uh, she was the seamstress that did my wedding dress, and she <laughs> lived in uh, in in my building upstairs. And you know, I was kind of looking for a job, and she said, "You know what? Why don't you learn how to sew, and then you'll take it from there." So I learned how to sew everything, so I can do anything. But all my friends back then were always looking for like a great bikini cut. And they were bringing all the swimwear from Brazil and Argentina and um, Australia. So I said, wait, let's just, what about if I make a, you know, bikinis and sell them to people I know and friends and friends of friends. And that's really how it took off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you say someone taught you how to sew. Yes. So you didn't go for go through fashion school to get to where you are? No, not at all. Um, um, I didn't. Uh, I went mm. to uh, university for something completely different. Uh, and, you know, she's amazing. This Her name is Martha. And uh, she's just, she's a genius. And she's, I took a whole summer with her. Mm -hmm. um, going three times a week to her house, staying like, you know, four or five hours and just learning how to do 
you know, how to sew, uh, how to do blazers and pants and dresses and just everything. So mm -hmm. what made you, you know, dedicate the time to actually, you know, spend so many hours on sewing? Was it something that you knew you wanted to do, like in childhood or...? No, no, not at all. Um, I was... So I, I was doing the, the um, you know, 9 to 5 job. I was, I was an engineering... Uh, I was a... <laughs> I was a, um, a drafter for mechanical engineering, wow. and I remember I used to drive to the, to the office, like it was, I had to drive like an hour to the office and an hour back, and I was just tired, and I would never see the sunlight, and I was like, I need to quit this. So I did, and I thought, what can I do now? And I thought about, like, I love animals, should I just you know, uh, walk dogs, or do, should I make wedding cakes? And then I'm like, wait, you know, I can do something in fashion, and she can, she can help me out. And that's, you know, I, obviously when I started doing it, I, I, I loved it. Sewing is, is so relaxing, and it's amazing. You can make anything. And during this entire time you were working as a drafter, was there a nagging feeling in the back of your brain like, I should be doing something creative. Definitely. Mm. I consider myself uh, very creative and uh, I always liked the arts um, and fashion. So yeah, totally, totally. Was there maybe like a, just like a dark night, you're driving home and you're like, yeah. my life could be so different. Like what was that moment like? Mm. like it, well, I actually remember that moment. Mm. Uh, it was... Um, we were with my husband uh, at our honeymoon in, in Thailand and um, I was sitting on the floor somewhere and I, I thought, oh my God, I want to do something that, that makes me feel free, that I don't have to, you know, I don't, I don't want to have a boss anymore. I don't want to have a, a, a desk job. I want to do something that I am my own boss. And when we came back to when we went back to the states, that's when I, I started thinking, okay, what can I do? It has to be something creative. It has to be something that lets me have freedom to, you know, if I want to be at home, I can be at home. If I want to, you know, uh, work with someone, I can work with someone. But I want to be free. So freedom was the primary driving force behind all I this. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And just to be creative and you know, show just. Take out everything that I had, all my 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 or my all my artistic feelings out. Yeah. So how then does Camelo Pardos come in that situation? Like, how did you come up with the name? Mm -hmm. What does the name mean? The name is a constellation uh, mm -hmm. with the shape of a giraffe. So ever since I was a little girl, I liked giraffes, and um, they every. Everyone uh, just started gifting me uh, statues of giraffes. Uh, so I used to collect them in, in my house, and then the name came a little bit from there. I didn't want to name it, you know, Giraffe Bikini. So I, I said, oh, let's just find a constellation, and it's coming to parts. And, and when, when you design, you know, what, what part of the brand, how do you design it? Like, is there a certain edge that you put, you know, is it has, everything has to be colorful or the prints? Um, hmm. Uh, I did, I did um, experiment a lot with, with prints uh, at the beginning. And then I started to kind of understand what people liked and, and what was popular. Uh, and I, I also mix a lot of prints, uh, like patterns and solid colors mm -hmm. and, or, you know, prints on prints and, and that makes it also cool. Mm. Um, yeah. Riffing off of that, how did you, or maybe when did you start to get a grasp of what's popular with your customers and what people want? That started on mm. Etsy. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I was getting a lot of requests for, you know, certain prints or certain colors. So I started researching uh, or going to the fabric job, uh, shops and seeing what what they had similar to that. And, and people were going crazy for, you know, the, the pineapple prints and the unicorn prints. And 
so it was like, okay, so they like animal prints, uh, but not just like an animal print, prints that have animals, animal figures on them. Mm -hmm. So then it was, okay, let's put, you know, uh, elephants on the bikinis and then let's put uh, I, ladybugs. There were so many prints with animals. <laughs> So and take, fruits also. Fruits take us through popular. like um, the journey, right? So you mm -hmm. you quit your job. Mm -hmm. You are like, I need to be free, and then you decide to learn how to sew. You realize that people were into swimwear, and then you started to sew bikinis. Yes. And then mm -hmm. how did you start to sell them? Actually, to maybe zoom into a specific moment, what was it like selling your first bikini? Yes. It was great. But it, uh, my first bikinis were, um, I sold them to friends. Mm -hmm. So it was great, but it wasn't like a stranger that mm -hmm. came and bought the bikini. The first bikinis that I did sell to strangers were um, with some of my other designer friends. We were doing like um, fashion markets. Mm -hmm. So we would uh, create a, um, a market at one of our places and one of the, our houses. And we, we would uh, start throwing... Uh, giving away like flyers for like okay Sunday from 12 to 5 come to our house we're gonna be selling hats and bikinis and we're gonna have like a tea party and then people from you know all wow. over would, would come and that's how yeah how I, I started to sell to people I didn't know to random people and that was great mm -hmm. that felt good and then so, how did you get that into it the Etsy market okay so um, I started Etsy when I moved to New York because there's a point in New York that is snowing outside and nobody wants to buy a bikini. So I, I would sell at the Arts and Fleas in Williamsburg, but people would buy, um, you know, jewelry or, or, or scarves or hats and they would look at the bikinis and be like, well, it's great, but for the summertime, not for now. Uh, and I wanted to keep on working and making money, so I looked into Etsy. I started with Etsy, and from the start, it actually like went great. Wow! Like the first week, I had I got like I don't know ten orders, which for me at that moment was a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so Etsy, that's how I started with Etsy. Was that the moment you Out knew this could be a thing? Like first week, ten orders. One more time. Note to self, cut this part out. Sorry. No, no, that was on me. I... <laughs> so uh, when you went on Etsy and you had this initial success, was mm -hmm. that to you the moment of realization that, hey, this is not just something to do for fun. This could be pretty profitable. Completely, mm -hmm. completely. And even better, it was like, I don't even have to leave my apartment it could be snowing outside but people you know in other parts of the world or the country need a bikini for a holiday or or if they live in Hawaii then they're always using a bikini so I started getting more and more and more orders and there was a point that I was getting like 10 20 orders a day and I was like yes this is my job now I can I can make this work all right so you talked about um you know, having your friends buy your first few bikinis. Yes. And I was wondering how important is it to have community to help you with your craft? And on that note, in addition, also you mentioned like your first few sales were with friends who were selling other items of clothing. So I guess support from friends and support from fellow artists, what was the whole totally. situation like? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. huge. Um, I, I feel, you know, independent designers should support one another. Uh, and, and having a community is huge. Um, so my first sales were with uh, two friends, but then their friends saw their, the, the bikinis and were like, where did you get that? And they're like, oh, you know, my friend Nadia makes them. And, and you know, it's through word of, of mouth. It's like a friend of a friend of a friend, and that's how the, com the community um, expands. Mm -hmm. For a young person looking to find their community, what advice would you give them? just to find, you know, the first few contacts that could get things going? Um, expose yourself, don't be, you know, don't be shy, show whatever you're doing to your family, your friends, uh, friends of your friends, uh, make a, a tea party or, I don't know, whatever kind of party you want to make at home and invite people over and show them what you're making. Uh, 
think that's the best way to to start to get exposed and and, and people to so people can, can can see what you're doing. And I was wondering, um, so you didn't go to fashion school, no, or design school, no. fashion design school. Um, I'm so bad. Okay, and so I'm wondering, what is the difference then between someone who goes to mm. school and then someone who decides to learn on their own? Okay. For me, um, the big difference is that I what I know how to make. Um, I cannot explain somebody else to make it. So if you go to school for it, they teach you how to teach somebody else how to go to um, a manufacturer and show them, you know, measurements and patterns, uh, how to delegate work, and and that has been, you know, a little bit of a problem for me because I I cannot have a team. Because it's it's so hard for me to delegate work. Mm -hmm. I think that has been the the biggest um, struggle uh, and challenge. Uh, and I think if, if if you go to school for it, you you just learn. You know, you learn how to make it, but you also learn how to uh, tell somebody your vision, mm -hmm. which is so important too. And do you think maybe because you haven't gone through like the formal route of fashion training? That you might have some advantages over people who are trained in school. Let's see. Um, I had more struggles. I don't know if advantages. Mm. No. Well, not for now. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I can think of. I see. So, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. were the struggles, um, other than learning? delegation yeah exactly that you know I had a lot of people wanting to team up with me and I had to reject because I didn't um, I feel like I'm a one woman show uh, and I, I didn't know how to I wasn't prepared to have a partner and I feel that if I would have taken that offer of having somebody you know partner up with me it, it's just it, it, it can go so much further mm -hmm. so much further do you wish that 18-year-old Nadia had gone to fashion school instead? Yes, I do. Because I, I could have had that and mm -hmm. also, you know, had my, my experience also with, with my, my now friend uh, uh, who taught me everything about sewing. Maybe, maybe they don't teach that in school. You're not so much hands-on mm -hmm. um, as I was, you know, um, with somebody that was one on one, one on one, but I think I would have learned a lot about you know patterns and um, other things that that would be handy right now. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that these are things you could teach yourself with, let's say, books or by talking to friends? Probably, mm -hmm. probably. If you if you really invest in it, you know, mm -hmm. put a lot of time in it, probably you can. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and that might be, you know, something that I could think about for, for my future. Mm. Yeah. All right, we are going to take a quick commercial Ooh. break. That is C-O-M-E-M-M, -M -M, commercial break. Let's try it again. 15 seconds with your host. that short commercial break and remember friends to take breaks what she said and now back, back to the interview all right so Nadia I mean you talked about you know some of the disadvantages you had like you know not going to fashion design school but I wonder what are the opportunities that this brand has given you that you created yourself mm. ah so many um you know I got to meet a lot of Cool people. Um, I got to collaborate also with with a lot of people. Uh, I got you know I'm my own boss, so that's great. Um, and I, I you know also having a, being a one woman uh, business, um, so clients talk directly to me, 
and I get all, all the feedback is for me. And that is also so great to hear when somebody tells you, you know, oh, the bikini you made for me, uh, you custom made for me, I love it. My, my husband thinks I look amazing in it. And that feels so good. That, I mean, having those, those compliments is amazing. Yeah. But beyond just, you know, the day-to-days of a one-woman brand, we also know that you have worked with really big brands like Vitamin Water. Hmm. Could you tell us how that came about and how they made you feel? Yeah, uh, that was in Miami, and they uh, contacted me, um, and they asked me if I could make a collection for them, and that it made me feel wonderful. Uh, we did a show, and I had like 10 models uh, throughout the, the Vitamin Water show, and um, and the colors were great, and they were inspired on, on the drinks and the flavors. That, that was a very cool experience, actually. Let's see, how did, yeah. the, how did the vitamin water people find your work? So I feel like at that moment, I, I got, um, that was in Miami, and I recently got an interview done by uh, a magazine, and like it exploded, and just a lot of people started contacting me through mm-hmm. that uh, and I and that's how they they contacted me through I see. yeah there we go so what is the day-to-day life of a one-woman business like okay uh, I can tell you maybe through all the cities I've been uh, it's always a different experience uh, in each place but for example in, in New York I would um, go buy fabrics at Midtown or, you know, and also in Miami I had a local fabric place that was wonderful and I used to go and, and get my fabrics from there. Seattle and Singapore, it's, it's a little bit different. I get them on, online uh, and I get them shipped to my house. Uh, so I would, you know, I would see what um, orders I have on Etsy and I would uh, start cutting the fabrics and then started sewing and after I finished with everything I would go to the post office and ship everything off. I see. Yeah. And one thing I find absolutely mind-blowing about Carmelo Pardis is that you mentioned no SEO, no ads, no fancy business things. I should have asked that question better but <laughs> I think it's absolutely amazing that this growth has been organic. And you mentioned that back in Miami, mm. you got your leg up with vitamin water through a news article. It sounds like you've got a pretty good handle on self-promotion without going through all the strange loopholes and tactics that people have to resort to. Could you share some of your strategies about sure. self-promo? And also nowadays with Instagram and mm-hmm. Facebook and just social media makes it so much easier to self-promote uh, for free. Like the Tropical Arts Club. Exactly. Please go to our Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> uh, that's how people get to know you. Also, Etsy has you know a lot of traffic mm-hmm. and people trust the platform. Um, and I didn't really need a lot of promotion on Etsy. Just orders came, you know, naturally there. <laughs> so is it sustainable having a career making artisanal crafts? Completely, yes. Mm-hmm. You just have to work really hard at it and put a lot of dedication and, you know, get, uh, get people to know you and uh, just expand and, and that's it, yeah. Completely. Yeah, and what would you tell someone who wants to start, um, but they're afraid they would fail? You got to try it out. <laughs> and, you know, like I was saying before, I think if you team up with somebody, um, that'll also help out. You know, it'll give you courage and maybe somebody that knows something different than you. Uh, that, that always helps. I think mm-hmm. teams are great. And especially when you're starting something, it's, it's, it's very scary when you start something by yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but having somebody there to be like, we can do this. Um, and it's also, you know, more contacts, more maybe you know some people that she doesn't know and she can help you out with in, in other parts of the, 
of the job, yeah. That's also a really good time to note that that's exactly how this show started. Friendship and magic. My little pony. <laughs> All right. Uh, Nadia, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, guys. I'm sure lots of people with fashion dreams are going to find this immensely useful, and you would have changed many lives with the so. Tropical oh, Arts yes. Club. And one last thing we do before we bid our guests goodbye mm -hmm. is we plug something for our guests. It might be upcoming show, it might be an online bikini store, mm -hmm. or it might be a new hot dish posted on Instagram. So what we do is we give you 30 seconds with a ticking clock which would show up here. Here. Or here. I don't actually know how this is framed. And on the count of three, two, one. So if you are looking to buy a bikini, please, you know, go to my website, which is www.camelopartisny.etsy.com and you know send me a message if you have any questions look at prints that you like and let me know hey Nadia I want to have it you know a little cheekier or you know I want to show less butt more butt <laughs> uh, and I'll you know I'll message you you know you can talk to me directly and I'll make you whatever you want fantastic and now as our special thanks for coming on our show we will attempt to Repeat that pitch through the power of music. Go on to www.camelopartisny.com and pose and pose and pose. For butts of every size, that was Nadia Diane, and this has been the Tropical Arts Club. Tune in for the next episode where we will have insert guest name here on the show have a great weekend or weekday we love you thank you so much for tuning in